All right, now here we have all the electronical components. And the brain of the entire operation is the cortex. Okay, a lot of our cortex is very used and kind of beat up and maybe not operate completely correctly. So if you're having trouble, get someone to help you and see if we can troubleshoot it. And if it needs to be retired, we'll retire and get you a new one. But this is the cortex. And we had more details about the cortex in, the, in a later video. But there's the cortex that all the motors and sensors and everything plug into. And that's how you control your robot. And then this is the joystick. It looks like a standard like Xbox controller. You have buttons, joysticks, bumpers. And then in the back goes the batteries. So this is how you use um, your RC control, driver control. You use this to drive the robot manually. And then these two communicate via these little USB thumb drive. They're called keys. They're called VEX keys. They use a standard USB port. And that's how they wirelessly communicate to each other. I don't have those right here, but I'll show you those in a future video as well. And we'll get to that later because a whole another big informational season about that. So that's your cortex, that's your brain, and your logic. And this is your programming cable. So it's just a uh, USB cable with two ends on it, both the USB A. And what you do is uh, this is how you program from your computer to the cortex. We'll get into that in a later video as well. But you should have both of those, or all three of those, and your uh, robot won't work without those. So make sure you have those, make sure they're in working order, and we'll get to that in a later video as well. Okay, then we have our motors. So VEX, at least this year, allows you to have 10 motors of any kind. So these are the most popular motors. They're two wire 393s. You can see right there, two wire motor 393. And the reason it's called two wire is because on the end here is two, literally two wires. There's two wires, positive and a negative, and comes out in two little pins. In the past, they've had three wire motors. I don't have any of those here, but those were inferior to these. These are the newest uh, motors, and the, these are much preferred, and we'll get into more details about these. And then we also have these other smaller two-wire motors. See, two wires, again. But this is a two-wire motor 269. So this motor is physically smaller than this motor. So the 393s have more torque in their raw state than the 29. Yeah, two six nines. So when you need more torque, you're going to use one of these. When you need less torque, you can use one of these. Uh, we try to get everyone ten of these because that's usually what most people prefer, but that can be hard. So what we have here is you should have seven three nine threes, seven three nine threes, all two wire. One two three four five six seven. Yeah, seven, and then three of the two-wire 269s. And we'll get into more about those, and these are highly configurable, and you can do a lot with these. So that'll be a whole other episode in amongst itself. So there's our motors. And then, if you notice in the Cortex, the, all the, uh, the pins for the motors, all these motor pins here, are, all have three uh, plugs in them. Because that's b because they used to have three-wire motors, which was your positive, negative, and signal. And your signal controlled how fast and which direction your um, motor turned. So, to get the same functionality out of these motors that have only two pins, you have to use one of these uh, motor controllers. There are motor controllers uh, 29. Okay? Well, that does is it takes the two-wire connection of your motors, your motor two-wire connections, you plug them together, like so, two pins together, blue to blue, and it takes that, it goes in this little box, and out comes three wires. So you can see, we went from a positive, negative, red and black, to a positive, negative, and signal, signal is the yellow. So then what you do is you can take that, and that can plug directly into your cortex. So now, it takes a signal from the cortex, converts it into two wires to drive your motor. We'll get more into that later. And actually, only eight of the ports need um, 
that converter because number 10 and number one accept two wire motors. So if your motors are fairly close, you could take your two wire, um, two wire motor and plug it directly into the Cortex in slot one or in slot 10, just like that. But that, that'll get done in a separate video. So then you should have somewhere in the range of about seven of those. We're trying to get more, but that should at least get you started and then we can get you some more in the future. So those are your motor controllers to be able to drive the two wire motors. But that, that's your basic motion control. So we'll get to that later. We're into the uh, Cortex and that later as well. And then here we have uh, three of the most basic sensors, most common sensors. And there, there's more. But here, um, it's a three-wire motor. This one's actually broken. It doesn't have any pins. I'll need to repair that. But they all have three pins. Positive, negative, and signal. But what these do is instead of you telling this what to do, it tells you something. So this has a little spring on it like that. You see how that pushes that little button there? Right there. When you push that, the little button clicks. You hear the little click? Well, this is a limit switch. As you can see, it's called a limit switch. And what it does is you would put this somewhere and whenever anything comes and hits it, it'll send a signal to the cortex that it's been hit. And then in your program, you can tell it to do something. So for instance, if this was hit, you can tell the motors to back up. So like if this hits the wall, the motors can back up and then it'll be okay and not destroy itself. That's like one example. And then a more sturdy version of the limit switch is the bumper switch. And the bumper switch is the same idea, only has a big button on it. So when you can press a button, it has the same idea, but this can be used for like something really um, forceful impact. So like if you're gonna run into a wall, it'd be better to use a bumper switch. It will take a lot of force rather than this teeny tiny little flimsy metal limit switch. So the two sensors, and then here's an encoder. And there's actually two, uh, two wire encoders, which are preferred, but here's a basic idea of an encoder. If what it does is you put your shaft through here and you like it connect this to your wheels or to your lift or your intake or anything like that. And then it counts how many revolutions your wheels take. So if you want to go a certain distance, then that's what this will be used for. And it will count it and then respond that number to the cortex. And then all of these sensors plug into the sensor spot. So as you can see, we have 10 slots here called motors, and we have 12-ish uh, ports over here for sensors. And we'll get into all that later. So there's a cortex, your motors, your encoders to drive the, or the, um, I'm sorry, the motor controls to drive the motors, and then the sensors. But then one problem that you might have trouble with, I'm sorry this is kind of a long video, but you may this cord may not be long enough to reach all the way from the end of your arm all the way back to your cortex at the base. So we need to be able to extend this. So VEC has a number of extension cords. And the most common are three wire extensions because that's, the, that's what they had originally, it's just three wires. So it has a female end on that side and a male end on that side. So what you can do is you can take your motor controller, plug it right into there, and now instead of only being that long, now you can reach much farther, if they'll see together, you can reach a much farther distance. And there's all kinds of varieties on these. You can have long ones like this, they have short ones if you only need to go a little ways. Um, they have two wire ones, which are the newer ones, at least they had for a little while. So if you don't want to put the motor controller on, you can put this right into the motor. And then they have a, a splitter. There, there's some regulations behind this. Make sure you understand the rules behind this. But it takes one signal and it can uh, output it to like two motors. So if you want to control two motors at the exact same time, do the exact same thing, but only use one port on the cortex, you can use this splitter cable. And then you'll find this, and this is um, more into the programming side and sensor side. It's a, uh, a um, what's it called? It's a little sensor, it's a 
I2C sensor cable, and it plugs into its own little port here on the uh, Cortex, and, and that will be a much, much later video, but that's what these are if you find these. But the most common ones you're going to use are the three wire extensions. And that's the electronical, logical side, and we'll go into more detail later.